Now, one of the things I'm going to start talking about a lot, uh, one of the things I believe I may have discovered, as far as I know, it seems to be a unique idea to me, um, is that there is such a thing as universal spiritual intuitions. Yeah, universal spiritual intuitions. There are certain underlying ideas about how a person should act in the world, what constitutes a spiritual person, that seem to be reiterated time and time again in all of the different holy books. So, for example, in Christianity, Jesus stresses time and time again, and the Christian scriptures stress time and time again the value of humility. For example, Philippians 2.5 says, you know, Jesus being in the form of God, took, humbled himself, became of no account whatsoever. And this isn't the only, there's, it's in the Bible 50 to 100 times, stressing the value of humility. God gives grace to the, God gives, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so on and so on. Jesus bends down to wash their feet, demonstrating the value of humility. Now, so does the Tao Te Ching stress often and frequently the value of humility, and not uncoincidentally, so do the Hindu scriptures, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita stress often and frequently the value of humility, and it's central to Buddhism too. So that would seem to indicate that there is such a thing as a universal spiritual intuition that wise men or sages from all different traditions look for guidance in their spiritual texts or look through their, their heart and mind and all seem to come upon the idea that to be humble is to be better than being arrogant. Now, I don't know for a fact that the Koran also value, uh, stresses the value of humility, but it wouldn't surprise me. And if it isn't in the Koran itself, I'm relatively certain it's in the Hadiths or... Uh, if it's not the Hadith, whatever the commentaries are on the Quran, There's a whole bunch of commentary books on the Quran. I think they're called the Hadiths. I'm not 100% sure I'm using the right term. But if, if, the, if, there, if, it, if the Quran itself does not stress the value of humility, I'm relatively certain you're going to find it in the commentaries on the Quran. You know, Allah is very pleased with the humble man. There's probably a hundred sayings like that. Allah is pleased if you, if you humble yourself. I bet you a thousand dollars that it's all over the Quran scripture. So what does this seem to indicate? This seems to indicate that there is such a thing as a universal spiritual intuition. If all religious texts agree that it's better to be humble than arrogant, then you can assume that there's real truth buried in the concept. Now, it seems to be a no-brainer obvious truth. It's better to be humble than to be arrogant. That would seem to be obvious. So where does the confusion come from? The confusion comes from that we live in the real world. And as I pointed out in some of my videos, there's the ideal world that the spiritual man or the religious person is striving for, and then there's the real world. And all of us, I don't care if you're the most tripped out Christian, the most fundamentalist fundamentals that ever lived, or you're the most holy Hindu, whatever, <laughs> Bhagavad, I don't know what you are. It's, all of us live to one degree or another in the real world, as much as me, we might try and body and identify with the ideal world as pointed to by our holy books. Last time I checked, not a single Christian apologist that I know lives in a monastery. And they haven't separated themselves off from the world. So when the Bible says to come out from among them, be ye holy as I the Lord am holy, we, are, we, we may be trying to literally embody that, but we are dealing it to some degree figuratively, and we're trying to match it up with our experience of the actual lived experience of the real world. This is not a downside. This is just reality. But I'm going somewhere with this. So in this here real world, and as I pointed out in some of my other videos, the real world, the world that this, that we inhabit, the everyday world of making money and going out and making a living, operates on mechanics and mechanics alone, full stop. That is what ultimately the buying and selling of products is about. That is ultimately what market economics is about. Mechanics and mechanics alone. You have a job in the real world. You, the person who is working that job, are valuable to that company only so far as you are valuable to the bottom line of that industry, full stop. 
And if you don't recognize that or don't know that, let me clue you in right now. That's God's honest truth. If you think they care about you because of, you know, they, you've worked there for nine years and they really like you, <laughs> you know, hate to burst your bubble. That's not how the real world operates. Now, out there in the real world, humility is not necessarily in the premium. Matter of fact, it's really easy to make a case at least temporarily for the short-term value of arrogance. Honestly. Honestly. But many people have noticed this. And I'm sure if you read primers on how to get ahead in the world, you're going to see arrogance is like underscored as a virtue. Think of it this way. At least in the short term, you go, you go work at a, you start a new job. You know, and, and all of us who are guys kind of understand this dynamic to one degree or another because we, we sort of grew up with it, understand the value of, of being arrogant to a certain degree. Part of it comes with the territory of being a guy. Honestly, it really does. You go, you just start a new job, a new company. You know, what do you do? You walk in like you own the place. Yeah, that's right. I'm here. I'm here. It's me. That's right. God's gift to this company. I work circles around these jerks. Let's go. Give me, give me, give me, give me important roles. Give me important roles. I'm here. That's the attitude of a lot of people in the day-to-day -day world. And it actually helps them in the day-to-day -day world. Because there is a short-term value to arrogance in the, in the world of the here and now, in the real world. Why? Because people believe it. <laughs> First thing you learn when you, when you learn to, when you learn bravado. If you start acting like, you know, you're the big tough man who knows everything, guess what? People are going to believe you. Honestly, that's, that's really why it has value, because people believe you. And in that world, humility is not necessarily in premium. Matter of fact, humility could be, you know, isn't, isn't necessarily going to help you in the here and now. If your goal is to get ahead in life and on the world's terms, which is money, success, status, all those type of things. Arrogance is probably going to help you, at least in the short term. But all of the spiritual texts seem to agree about the value of humi humility intrinsically. And another thing that they all seem to agree on, at least to one degree or another, is to devalue the real world in favor of the ideal world. We the Christians, it's explained like this in the Christian Bible. Love not the world and that which is in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust, pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. I don't think there's actually a scripture that says we're in the world, but not of the world, but that's the concept that gets pushed, to, that gets sold to Christians. We're supposed to have one foot in the real world. Yeah, rate, you know, go out and make money and raise your kids and bring home the bacon, feed your family, things like that. But we are supposed to have one firm foot firmly in the ideal world. And the Christian scriptures are unequivocal in their valuing of the ideal world over the real world. Love not the world and that which is in the world, because all that is in the world is not of the Father, but of the world. And as I pointed out just a few seconds ago, the real world out there functions on mechanics and mechanics alone. And it does not value one iota as a human being. And it doesn't, you have, you're this big important person, you have all these special feelings and you're such a beautiful snowflake, the world don't care. The world don't care. And that's been the constant refrain of the spiritual text throughout the centuries. Because they have n noticed the difference between reality and what we need to do and the world of the ideal. And to one degree or another, all spiritual text, all wisdom truths, all of it is attempting to negotiate successfully between the 